hi guys and welcome back to my channel our channel today i want us to talk about something that you guys have been asking me about and remember that in this channel we talk about anything we are practicing and we practice what we are talking about sawa sawa thank you so today i want us to talk about the sources of seeds the management that you need to take care of your plants or your managu seedlings in the seed bed and the harvesting period and how you should be going about transplanting and also what you need to do during the harvesting period one of the places that you can get your seeds from is kenya seeds company or simlo seeds so if you are in kenya you can get them from the two companies because they will be selling you ideal seeds you can also get the seeds from uh, by making them yourself the first seeds that we started our manag with was seeds that we got from the compound a bird just dispersed the seed and then it grew we let it flower and then we got the seeds from there so you can also get the seeds by making them yourself or drying the seeds yourself you can also get the seeds from an agrovet a registered agrovet but those ones i would uh, advocate for a somebody who is not really having an ideal place to get the seeds from like if there is no kenya seeds company or simlo seed outlet in your area that is when you should go for the agrovet so after you have purchased your seeds remember to soak them in water for at least 12 hours if you cannot uh, soak them for 24 hours 12 hours will do good job and they will sprout very quickly after you soak the seeds you prepare your seed bed so when you're growing your seedlings in a seed bed make sure that you plant them in a moderate manner like you do not plant a lot of seedlings uh, or a lot of seeds in one area it is best you have a number of seed beds instead of having all the seeds in one area because you're going to save yourself from thinning the plants and losing the seedlings and you're also going to increase the chances of having a strong seedling which you are going to transplant in a, another place and it is going to increase the chances of survival so when you're transplanting your managus in a container in the field or even in the grow bag make sure that you transplant only the seedlings that are having a strong stem so in my previous video the one that i am talking about managu farming business in kenya you can check it out up here from this link so in that video i had told you guys that you should transplant your managus when they have five true leaves but this time i am here to change the narrative you know we experience different things when we are growing these things gain more expertise as we do it when i transplanted my namanagus when they had five true leaves i realized that the chances of survival were very minimal so most of the transplants are died because the plant is very small at that stage so the chances of survival especially during the dry season it is very low if you do not have enough water to water your plants every day in the morning and in the evening avoid transplanting based on the leaves transplant based on the stem based on the stem they are going to increase the chances of survival and they are going to have a better yield at the end of the day in a faster period so instead of keeping the seedlings in the seed bed for at least 45 days let them go for one and a half month so this will be dependent on the manure that you have put in the seed bed but do not put too much and the watering schedule that you're going to apply in your seed bed so if you apply a good seed bed and then you realize that your stems or the stems of the managus are strong this is the point that you're going to transplant your managu from the seed bed to the field when you are growing the managus in the seed bed do not forget to spray them with neem oil to control aphids these aphids or these pests they like uh, eating the plant leaves and they deter them from growing fully so for you to avoid spray neem oils frequently it can be any other pesticides as long as it is something that you are ideal or the things that you're using whether you're doing organic or chemical control methods still spraying the neem oil or spraying the pesticide should continue throughout the growing period so if you're going to be having the managu for at least four months or for at least uh, eight weeks make sure that you're going to spray the neem oil throughout the period every other week so that you can prevent the managus from getting infected by the aphid this is actually what happens when you do not uh, spray neem oil frequently they are going to be eaten on the leaves the locusts are going to feed on the leaves even the cutworms are going to cut the stems so it is basically a necessity that you spray your neem oil frequently 
So during the harvesting period, make sure that you harvest your managus in a timely period, especially for the ones that are going to select indigenous managus. These managus are loved by birds. They eat the birds, the fruits, and they also eat leaves. So if you do not cut your managus or you harvest the managus on time, you're going to find that they have been pecked. Kidogo kidogo zimekuliwa uko kwa mwisho mwisho and it will not be ideal to take to the market. So for you to avoid that, make sure that you harvest on time. Secondly, it will also increase the chances of the sprouting of new managus, new branches. So for you to have a you know a recurrent, a frequent uh, managus sprouting harvest on time still you're going to avoid the chances of having a lot of aphids on your farm by reducing the number of mature leaves so guys those are the points that i wanted to share with you today and i hope that you're going to help you in your growing managu for businesses i tried the managus with a kitchen garden the one that i have been showing you and i've seen the results are doing very well by the way and there is a market ready for the managus you know i keep telling you the managus are eaten with absolutely almost everything managu na chapo managu na fish managu na mchele managu na kila kitu managu na kila kitu okay so guys when you're growing managu, make sure that you follow these simple steps and they are going to help you to grow your managu in a way that you're going to even say that you know alafu kitu ingine those people growing the managus for kitchen, it might seem very simple. So when you're doing it for the field, make sure you follow this step. Each step, kila kitu yenye ninawasho. Otherwise, Mr. Kim niambia timiri, muli niambia kitu na haifanyi. Sawa sawa? Yes. So that is just about it, guys. Remember to subscribe, share, comment. Uh, tell me what I should add in the video or anything else that you might want to know about managus. I will be very, very happy to share with you. And until next time, bye-bye.